But if you close your eyes Good day, friends, and welcome to Pass It On, a Knights Nation talk show. Here on the show, we speak to the people who ultimately will speak with you to share insights to what they feel will help guide students or staff and or community personnel in the right journey of success. So join us here weekly for the latest in criticism and discussion featuring the biggest relevant stories of students, representatives, teachers in our environment today. I'm your host, Andre Quattlebaum, better known as Coach Q. My guest today is filled with heart, spirit, and determination, and has, be, has been prepared to make a difference for our next generation of students. With a background in editing and publication, she enjoys working with and teaches students how to creatively write and generate resourceful information for 19 years, and here at North County for 10 years now. She's a multi-dimensional teacher who applies her skill set daily whether it be in her English classes or her journalism classes. We asked her here today to speak with us about how she operates our North County School newspaper for the last several years. We welcome Ms. Ellen Oaks. Ms. Oaks, I'm glad you made it here today. As I always say, time is money, so let's get started. Um, do you feel technology has taken away true print journalism? I feel that technology in a lot of ways has enhanced print journalism because okay. Uh, print journalism is limited to people who have the means and the ability to get a print uh, edition of a newspaper. Sometimes that was limited to people in um, communities that were close to a center where a newspaper was published. Okay. Nowadays, people can access newspaper articles on Twitter and other platforms. They can get articles from the New York Times. They can get articles from the Washington Post. And so articles that might have been local in the past are now available to the nation as a whole. That's very true. Um, how has technology enhanced your journalism skill set? Well, technology has always been a part of journalism for me because even when I started teaching journalism, we used a computer to compose. However, what we were composing was ultimately going to be a paper newspaper. Okay. So even when I started doing journalism here at North County, my mindset was wrapped around a paper product. And when we first created a newspaper that was linked to the school North County website, it looked like a paper newspaper, okay. even though you accessed it online. Online, okay. So this is the first year that we have adapted mm -hmm. and really changed that, and we've gone to a WordPress kind of format so that we have more access to putting articles up more regularly. Okay. We can change articles more regularly. It's more of an organic and living document rather than something that is a hard copy link to an online source. And probably once you put it on that um, link or where uh, press, it cannot be changed. It can be changed. Okay. So that, that is a difference between print journalism and online journalism, and that's something that print journalists have struggled with for uh, years okay. as soon as the internet came on, because it used to be and when you had a hard copy of the newspaper and it went to press... That was it. That was it. If there was a problem, the next day the journalist would issue a retraction and say we had an error on page three of the newspaper and here it is. Right. Nowadays, journalists throughout the world say this is an ongoing story and they update the stories and so the stories are more dynamic. Okay. But a difference is if there's an error in a story, quite often it is simply corrected in there. And so somebody who may have seen it earlier may not know that that correction took place. That's the advancement of technology. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how have you adapted your teaching methods uh, based upon your experiences of uh, teaching journalism and English um, in our current technology of society? Well, that's been an ongoing process that my students have helped me in okay. as well. We have kind of made decisions together about putting the paper onto WordPress, what it's going to look like. Mm -hmm. A lot of what it looks like is up to the students. And my students have also helped me to find ways of promoting the newspaper. And that's where Nick came in. Nick's been pretty instrumental in finding ways to get students interested in and looking at some of the articles we have. Okay, and I mentioned him, Nick, Nick uh, Matisse, welcome to the show as well with Ms. Oaks. Uh, can you expel upon uh, what Ms. Oaks is just talking about, if that clarification? Well, we tend to integrate um, the news with uh, Twitter, which um, 
update posts about it when stories are going to come out. Mm -hmm. um, Instagram, Snapchat. We um, we're trying to you know get our like our uh, newspaper out there in different you know ways. Ways, yeah. Okay. Throughout. All right. Internet. How have that experience been for you? I, I think it's been very good. I mean, we have a lot of people retweeting, liking the photos. I mean, and the stories as well. I think it's a good way to get it out there. Definitely. And one of the things that Nick mentioned is the photos. Having it in an online format allows us to update and put those visuals in with our mm -hmm. stories that are a real enhancement for um, news in the technology age. That it is not simply words. We right. also have those photos behind the stories. Okay, which leads me to another question. How are digital photographs too plentiful to be meaningful? Well, we do have to be cautious about what we sh show. Right now, my students are beginning a unit on photojournalism okay. because um, obviously one of the big concerns in our nation today is fake news and with all the digital manipulation right. that can go into a photograph, um, that can be a concern. Absolutely can. So we look at what the requirements are. Most journalists, contrary to what is sometimes put out there, mm -hmm. most journalists do have a very se serious code of ethics in terms of what can be portrayed, both what they write okay. and what they show visually. It has to actually show the event as it happened. You cannot take a fire, for example, and add more smoke and flames no, in Photoshop to Absolutely. make it look more dynamic. Right. You have to show the events as they happen. You can't crop out elements that are part of a story to uh, say, oh, this was all this particular group's fault, I'm going to crop out the people from the other group. Exactly. Everything has to be shown the way it happens, and that is part of journalistic Which habit. makes it meaningful, well, you know, for some. Um, what are some of the rules, um, responsibility, that you want to try to teach your journalism teach, uh, students? So overall, objectivity and honesty okay. are the two golden rules, both for photojournalism and for written journalism. Many of us have emotional connections to the stories we're going to tell. Right. And the students are drawn to stories that interest them and have emotional connections. So it's sometimes hard to be objective. <laughs> True. So what we emphasize is that they have to go out there and find other people to get the opinion. You can put in opinion as long as you are quoting somebody. The journalist, him or herself, needs to be objective. But that doesn't mean the story doesn't have an emotional content. True. It's just that we have to allow people on both sides of an issue the chance to speak mm -hmm. so that the reader can make up his or her own mind based on getting a balanced perspective. Absolutely. I have a, um, a degree in mass communication, and I'm pretty sure, as you know, back then before anything was print, you had to verify three reliable, credible sources. Right. Nowadays, I really don't know how that aspect, because of technology, I don't know whether that in print journalism or photojournalism, whether that is the same based upon the current technology or society that we currently live in. Would you expel upon uh, that? Overall, yes, it is. Okay. And uh, there is still there is still the American Society of Newspaper Editors has okay. a code of six uh, six different rules for okay. journalists that would cover that, and that is what most journalists try to live by. Okay. Now, news is also breaking and dynamic, because when you and I were young, mm -hmm. we might get news a couple times a day on the television, and the newspaper came out once a day, and so there was time, a small time frame, but a time frame in which that news could be gathered. Now, news sources are in a rush to be the first to cover to some kind of breaking Absolutely. news, and so when it is that breaking news, they usually acknowledge, whether it's in an online source or a print source, that this is a developing story and that more information will be released as it becomes available. Mm -hmm. But certainly there is that um, impetus for news organizations to say, hey, we covered this first, we got the breaking news, and we drew the, that uh, traffic okay. to our site. Um, what kind of articles make for a good school newspaper? So school newspapers are different than national newspapers because, or even local newspapers, yeah. because a local newspaper, for example, is going to cover that big game the morning after or the day after it happened. Mm -hmm. They're there. Uh, we don't have that. We're learning how to do newspaper. We usually publish articles. Students write newspaper articles about once a month. 
So instead of focusing on the details of the big game the night before, we have to look at the personalities behind it. Yes. How is a coach planning to change the dynamic for this season? What are some new strategies he or she is using to get the athletes to perform better in the season as a whole? Right Absolutely. now we're looking at as a preseason for winter sports. Or who's somebody on the team who overcame a particular challenge to be a part of this team? So so it's like a, it's, it's a job for them. It is, and okay. so we, um, instead of looking at something that will be old news by the time we cover it, we're looking at the story behind the story as okay. a student newspaper. Okay, which leads me to my next question. Uh, how different is a school newspaper versus, versus a student newspaper? Or is there a difference? Um, I don't know, do, do you feel like you're a part of the, the newspaper as a part and you have the ability to choose topics that interest you? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I think it is it is for the students, okay. by the students. So overall, I would say that there's not a big difference. Okay. Um, Nick, how has this experience been for you to uh, be in a journalism class? Because sometimes I see you uh, out and about and you're doing photography work and you're speaking with the people and I think you have an uh, aspect in the, in the newspaper that's coming up about something that you're doing. Do you want to talk about what you're doing? Um, well, I chose um, the topic of personality okay. and different ways to like identify personality traits. So like such as handwriting, okay. one way you can do it. Um, so handwriting is unique for everybody. Correct. People have different, you know, like swirls or loops for the certain letters. Broad, you know, like a, if you do like cursive Y, you know, it like, could be a broad at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And let's say that someone writes on. Um, you can detect. Uh, what kind of personality trait that they have? Yes. Okay, so I guess uh, one of the articles you're going to be doing in the school newspaper is doing that type of aspect. Mm -hmm. Okay, which is uh, outstanding, I would say. I want to say just about that as well. That Nick got interested in that through his psychology class. So one of the great things about journalism is that uh, students can take a topic that just particularly interests them that they learn about in some other forum. Yes and then they can look at it in a different way for journalism. So it's not divorced from your other classes, it is a way to complement other classes in okay. the school as well. Uh, I'm gonna get you out of here on this, uh, we play this little game here on Pass It On, it's called okay. 60 Seconds to Get to Know Who You Are. Okay. Uh, where's your hometown? Well, I was born in Baltimore, Johns Hopkins Hospital, and grew up right outside Annapolis in central Anne Arundel County. Okay. And I'm a local girl. You're a local girl, okay. Uh, what three words best describe you? I am determined, like out of our students tall. <laughs> I am a nerdy knight, nerdy and <laughs> I am a nerdy knight, <laughs> and um, I am conscientious. Okay. Uh, what's one thing you couldn't live without? My family. Your family. Okay. What's one food you cannot resist? Oh, moussaka. Moussaka. Love moussaka. Okay. And where is your favorite place to be? Ah, uh, in my home. I'm a homebody. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite thing to do at home? Read. Read. English of course teacher, you read. nerd. Uh, where's your best place you've traveled? The best place I've traveled? I'm going to say Dubai. My daughter was working there at Emirates Airline, and I got to go to Dubai. That was very I think that's when I first met you, uh, when um, I first got here. Yeah. You said your daughter was overseas in Dubai, mm -hmm. which I found very good. Um, what is your favorite movie or book? Oh, gosh. I guess my favorite book is Pride and Prejudice. I think you can read it every decade and get something new out of it. Okay. Uh, what would you do for a career if you wasn't doing this? I would write novels if I had the chance. Write novels. If I had the chance and I had the, if I had it, it was independently wealthy and could sit back and take my time. Absolutely. Uh, do you have a nickname? No. Okay. I, What's your most overused word or phrase? What do you think? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Pay attention. Pay attention. Listen. <laughs> uh, what did you want to do when you were growing up? When I was growing up, I wanted to do something involving books that did not involve sitting down. So teaching actually worked out for me because I knew I didn't want to be sitting all the time. Okay. Uh, tell us something about you that's surprising that we would not know or think. Um, well, the most surprising thing about me is I have five children plus one stepdaughter. They've got a broad range of ages, going from the youngest is 10 and the oldest is 32. Okay. And um, so probably most people don't 
know that unless we heard Dr. Wagner announce it at a faculty meeting a while ago. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, we'd like to thank both of you for coming out and sharing with us and the viewers out here passing on about uh, the aspect of our high school newspaper. Um, as we always tell our guests, if anything else is coming down the pipeline that you guys want to share or get more information and awareness about the school newspaper, whatever you're doing, please come to Pass It On. This is what the show is all about, uh, expressing and passing on relevant information when it comes down to students and staff. And you're always welcome to come on to the show. And we want to thank you very much thank for coming for out, Ms. Oaks. And thank you very much, young man, Mr. Nicholas. And once again, uh, we'd like to thank these individuals. As you just heard, you can see the comparisons as far as the difference of our newspapers and our technology and society. And Ms. Oaks has done a very great job in helping North County High School uh, assimilate a quality newspaper. Uh, so we'd like to thank them for coming out. And we'll be right back with three more outstanding distinguished guests. Be right back. <laughs>